Hi everybody, Tom and Shelley with Empower Network and the 1010 Formula team. We would like to share some information with you about glaucoma. Yesterday, Tom wrote a post on the cataract surgery that he's going to have. And really, the reason he has to have the surgery is a result of the disease that he has, which is glaucoma. So Tom, take us back to when you were diagnosed and why it was significant. Sure. Well, um, I was diagnosed uh, back in uh, 1997, the end of 97. Um, I was just uh, 39, getting ready to turn 40 years old, and uh, you know both my parents wore glasses. Things at the things at the grocery store, the little uh, uh, sign at the grocery store that tells you what's on the end of the aisles got a little little foggy. I couldn't see them very well, so I went in to get uh, to get my eyes checked, figuring that uh, you know I needed glasses. Um, my uh, general doctor gave me a general practitioner gave me a, an eye exam, and he sent me over to. Uh, to talk to the uh, uh, ophthalmologists, and uh, I remember that day as clearly as if it were yesterday. Um, I, I went in and I was sitting in the chair there, and they did the exam. And, I, and I'm, I'm ex-military, and I've been in the military for 16 years, and and I, I've been poked and prodded with just about everything. But one thing I never had, even in the military, is uh, is a thorough eye exam, and. Um, I remember the nurse did the test and, and he went away and he came back with the doctor and, and the doctor redid the test and looked at the nurse and he said, yeah, you're right. And um, he said to me, the doctor said to me, uh, you look like a guy that wouldn't want me to pull any punches. And I said, I, I don't. And um, he, he looked straight at me and he said, you are this close to total irreversible blindness. And it was... Uh, it's like being punched in the gut. I mean, I can't really describe all the emotions that were going through me at that time. Um, here I went in because my vision was a little blurred, and uh, this doctor is telling me that I'm I'm ready to go blind. Um, why it was significant, other than just the sheer factor of being told that you're about to go blind, um, is that glaucoma typically is a disease that affects older people. Um, it, it just comes with age. Um, and here I was, 39 years old, um, with, uh, with glaucoma, which was very, very uncommon and, uh, and very unusual. And uh, just the thought of you know, going blind, I mean, oh my God, I, I just, again, like I said, I, I just can't describe all the emotions uh, you know, that went through, through me that, at that point. So. Um, but they told me that they wanted to do surgery immediately. Um, they put me on drops for a few days, to eye drops for a few days to uh, see if, if the pressures would lower. Um, the pressures lowered uh, eventually, but then they started creeping back up. So we uh, ended up having to do uh, surgery. The, the surgery is called a trabeculectomy. And, and uh, maybe I'll write a blog about that one day. That's, that's a whole other topic. But... Uh, it was it was a very scary time. I remember sitting around uh, while I was waiting for uh, the doctor and, and thinking about um, looking around to make sure I, I knew where everything was. So when I went blind, I, I wouldn't trip over things and you know just sitting in sitting sitting at home and and having my eyes closed and thinking, okay, this is what it's going to be like. And this isn't so bad because all I have to do is open my eyes. But then, you know, once I go blind my eyes will be open and I still won't see anything so um, it was it was pretty damn scary it was traumatic and a lot of people our viewers may not understand as to why it, this was so significant you know having glaucoma the key is that we don't know how long Tom had it it was in stage when it was discovered and you might say well how did that happen well here's a, here's a tip the nickname for glaucoma is silent stealer of sight. Tom, would mm -hmm. you like to explain why sure. it's nicknamed that? Um, the easiest way to explain it is if, if you imagine the eye as a hollow ball, like a like a water balloon. Um, the ball, the the eye uh, inside the eye creates um, a thing called aqueous liquid, and that's the thing that keeps your eyeball inflated. Uh, it's constant process. It's it's creating this aqueous fluid all the time, and it's draining it through ducts 
on both sides of your eyes. Um, so imagine that uh, the ducts stop working for whatever reason. It's a valve that lets the, the aqueous fluid um, come out into the eye and it's reabsorbed by the body. So uh, imagine those stop working and, and so the, the, the water balloon gets fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller and it actually can begin to press uh, back against the orbit in the, the, the back of the eye socket where the um, optic nerve and, and all of the blood vessels and everything come through um, that hole in the back of your orbit there that you know supplies your eye with uh, with all the nutrients so um, without some way to let that pressure off it just continues to build and build and build until it basically uh, just chokes everything off it just presses against all the nerves and and the nerves stop working and, and as you probably already know uh, nerve damage is uh, at least today um, not reversible it's it's can't be repaired it can't be fixed uh, when a nerve is dead it's it's dead forever so right um, that's why you want to uh, you want to get an eye exam so go out tomorrow call your doctor and if you haven't had an eye exam in a while get one okay so that's the process of how the disease works but that doesn't explain why it, it is nicknamed it is nicknamed the silent stealer site because as it presses on the optic nerve it steals your sight from out here yeah the peripheral vision the goes. peripheral vision mm -hmm. is what it starts to take first so you may not I mean and then it just creeps along so Today, you might be able to say, okay, I can see my hand here, and I can see it back here. But as, as it just sneaks up on you, you don't realize that, hey, today I can see my hand here, but I can't see it back here anymore. You don't realize that it's sneaking up on you and stealing your sight. Um, so this is how Tom's disease went undiagnosed. We didn't know his sight was being stolen. And this is why it is so significant, because what has gone from him is gone. We can't put it back. And people say, well, go get glasses, Tom. Well, here's the point. You cannot correct what you don't have anymore. So his peripheral is gone. Mm -hmm. We can't get that back for him. Um, right. And if you have one eye stronger than the other, the other eye will compensate, which makes the process even more difficult. It, it happens so gradually that uh, you, you really don't notice and your eyes your eyes will compensate for it without you even knowing it right so mm -hmm. it has a very deadly nickname silent stealer sight and this is why because there's not a lot of clues that you may have it so we would really encourage all of our viewers here young or old no matter if you can see in front of you or not, no matter if you have glasses or not, of course, if you have glasses, you're already going to the eye doctor. But if you don't have eyeglasses and you think, I can see, I don't need to go to the eye doctor, we are going to strongly encourage you to go and have a pressure check because that's truly the only way you can tell whether or not you have the disease. So, Tom, another another point that we would like to share with our viewers here is that... Um, once we got through initial stage of managing the disease, and well, it's, it's not managed. We manage this disease daily. Um, it's something we will live with forever um, because there's no cure to glaucoma. That's another right. tip there, no cure. So uh, it was quite the shocker for both of us, and we manage this disease daily. But Tom, tell me, how, how much of a struggle is it to work on the computer? Well, vision is, is um, my vision is, is definitely impaired. Um, it, causes, uh, it causes headaches and a lot of eye strain. I get my eyes strain much, much faster than, than uh, someone with healthy eyes would. Um, it's very difficult for uh, reading glasses to work for me. And uh, I just, you know, I just, just have a lot of trouble with, with doing that. But yet, Tom, you're building an internet business. Mm -hmm. I am, I am, and and you know there are people out there that um, are dealing with circumstances much much greater than mine, and so I I don't feel like I'm handicapped. Um, but I do I, I would say this to you, um, you know, 
don't make excuses for why you're not doing what you want to do. Um, right after I was diagnosed with glaucoma, I started looking at everything. When I would drive down the road, I would just look around and, and just be in awe of the fact that I could see things because that was, you know, my, my, my awareness was heightened so much, you know, to the, to the possibility of, of losing that. Um, don't wait. Don't wait until you can't see. Um, it's way too late. Uh, same thing with your business. Don't wait until, you know, you have a reason to, to do what you need to do to make your business successful. Get out there and do it right now. You have reasons right now, everybody. If you're watching this video, it's because you've come across it. Either maybe you Google glaucoma or the aura or something of that nature that landed you here because you have the disease. But you may have also landed on this video because you're a part of our list or a part of our following on our blog. Mm -hmm. And our blog is about making money. We are blogging to make money. And we are blogging for a passion and a purpose. And we just want to share with you that there's really no excuse for you to not be going out there and going after your passion and your purpose. So everybody has something that may or may not inhibit them. You know, Tom has this disease and I know he struggles with it. Um, like you said, he, his eyes tire much uh, easier than a, uh, than a normal person with healthy eyes. Um, he's also put up with comments, you know, from co-workers because his eyes are often very tired looking and they're often kind of droopy and that's a result of the trablectomies that he's had and, um, you know, he's had rumors going around about him that, oh, he's a drug addict or he's an alcoholic or something because of the way he looks. So he's not only had to, um, you know, put up with his own physical challenges that the disease brings, but then he has to put up with, you know, the people who want to judge him because of the way he looks. And, uh, you know, so it's a challenge, but yet he troops on like many people with challenges do. So troop on people, get up, get off your duck, just steal some words from my, from our mentors, Chris and Susan Beasley and, and get going. There's no reason to not get going. I mean, Tom is doing it. We're doing it. Despite the challenges that we have, you can do it too. Any, sorry, I kind of stole the show there, Tom. <laughs> Any words you'd like to add? Um, yeah, get off your butt and do what you need to do for yourself and your family. Make a decision uh, that you're going to, to have a better life. Um, you know, people say, well, money can't buy happiness. You know what? Those are people that don't have money. Okay. Dave Ramsey says it best. Don't take financial advice from your broke brother-in-law. Um, money may not buy happiness, but money damn sure gives you choices. Um, so, so get off your butt, do what you need to do and get off your butt and go get an eye exam. And yeah. when you go to the doctor, tell him that you or her that you want to have your pressures checked. Yes. So, two messages here. Maintain your healthy eyes. Go get your eye checks. Regardless if you wear glasses, go ask for that pressure check. And then come back and don't you know, leave all the leave all the excuses at the door because we want to see you on the inside. On the inside. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today.